In this video, we'll start out in composite, bringing in our footage and layering it together using a blend and comp node and exploring the blending modes. I'll start out with a blank workspace, and the first thing I'll do is import my footage. I'll choose File, Import, or press Control i I'll browse over to the first robotics animation, Maya Project, and there's my footage in the images directory. What I've done is to name each file Scene 1, Shot 1, or Scene 1, Shot 2, B for beauty, and AO for ambient occlusion. Composite then views these as sequences and shows them as one file so it's easy to pick. I'll bring in the first one, picking the ambient occlusion, holding control, and picking the beauty. I'll click Import, and I'll create a composition. I'll put this in the compositing folder in the project's directory. I'll name this .tx composition file, composites workspace, scene one, shot one, composite. This will let me know that it's the working file for that composite. I'll plan for each shot to be its own composite, exporting an image sequence which I'll put together in my nonlinear editor. I'll hit create to create the composition. What composite does then is in a node-based view shows what's going on in the schematic on the left and the monitor on the right. Right now what I've got this set to, which I can see by right-clicking in the monitor, is the tool output under display. This says whatever I have selected is what's showing. I'm going to change this to the composition output so I can see it a little clearer. I'll also change the output size. The node we have selected defines the tab and properties we see. I'll fix the format first. Our format is HD 720, progressive. I'll choose that, and there's our frame rate. If we need, we can also adjust the frame rate down from 24 to 2398, or vice versa. Now I'm going to layer in the pieces. I'll disconnect the occlusion from the output by holding control and clicking on the connection line. Once we have our pieces in, we want to get them composited together. The simplest way to do this is to right click and add from the pick list. I'll choose compositing and blend and comp. This is a pretty standard node to use. The way all of the nodes work is the left side is the inputs and the right side is the output. I'll open this up so we can see more if there is. I'll put the ambient occlusion in the front, clicking and dragging from the output and the occlusion over to the input on the front. I'll put the beauty into the back, clicking and dragging from the output of the beauty to the background. I've also got places in here for a mat and a mask if needed. Now I'll take the blend and comp and wire it over to the output. When I select the output, I can see I've got the occlusion pass showing. It's working correctly. Here's what I need to change. I'll select the blend and comp node, and down on the tab in the bottom I have the blend and comp properties. Both front and back can be controlled by color and luminance as well as opacity, and we can choose a blending mode. The usual one I'll use for ambient occlusion is multiply, flying out normal and picking multiply as a blend. The multiply blending mode, and this is a standard math operation in every compositor, multiplies the red, green, and blue values of the over and under color and divides by the color space. The result is always darker, and multiplying by white is like multiplying by one. It's invisible. What I have looking outside are dark rocks and a little bit of a halo I'll take care of with the background. If I scrub forward on the timeline, I'll see my images, and I need to go forward a little more. It looks like I need to add more frames as well. If I select one of the pieces of footage, I can see that the duration is 96 frames. I'll go on my timeline and make sure I'm seeing 96 frames. There's my composition, from 1 to 96. As I scrub to the right on the timeline, we can see that footage play. The occlusion is laying over the beauty and adding in the darkness in all the corners. The final tweak on that blend and comp node is to play with the opacity on the front gain. I'll dial it back a little bit. As you can see, when I take the opacity down from 1, the shadows in the corners of the ceiling get lighter, not as heavy looking. This is an artistic choice depending on the look you want. If it's supposed to be dark and brooding, you can crank this value up and get deep, heavy corner shadows. If it's supposed to be a bit lighter, we can pull this back. I can also play with the values in here. Sometimes I'll color tone the occlusion. I'll reset these and leave the opacity alone. I can use the trackball to the side as well 
adding a particular tone in the occlusion, as you can see, if I need a distinct color mood to enter into this part. I'm going to leave it alone at white and just deal with the dial down opacity. Looks pretty good. I'm ready for the next step, which is to insert a background. To generate a background, I'll click with the mouse wheel and choose Tools. On the tools on the right, we have Image Generation. Clicking on that file folder shows the available tools. I'll use a bilinear ramp in this case to simulate a sunset. I'll pull it into the view and select it. Now, in the monitor, I can click there and hit 6 to show that tool, or 7 to show the end of the output. I'll wire this in and then see how it looks. Remember it's a node-based view. We can pull pieces all over the place. It doesn't matter where they are, it matters where they're connected. What I'll do is add a new Blend and Comp node after the Beauty Pass before the occlusion. Selecting the connection line and right-clicking and choosing Add from Pick List, Recent, and there's Blend and Comp. It's now wired in with the Beauty Pass as the background. I'll change this, deleting that connection, and putting it into the foreground, then taking the bilinear ramp, which will be my background, and putting it into the back. I've got the output showing, so any changes I make to the bilinear ramp will show up behind the windows. The first thing I'll do is choose colors. I'm going to say the sun is almost down, and we have a little bit of color in the lower right. I'll click on the color swatch, expanding if I need it, and select colors. I'm going to work with a dull orange here. Now for the lower left, I'll add just a little bit of red, maybe a deep red, but bringing down the luminance so it's very, very slight. I'll click OK. On the top right, then, I'm going to add in a little bit of blue or indigo. And I'm working with a palette here. You can also choose custom colors if you need. I'll bring this value way down, almost black, and maybe desaturate a little bit so it's not as vibrant. Now in the upper left, I'll leave it as almost black, maybe just the tiniest bit of blue taken to black in there. My ramp is almost set, and it's simulating a sunset. I can also play with the center, moving the X center over to just get a little bit of glow off the rocks, and the Y center up or down to define where does that color blend. I'm going to pull it in so the rocks just have a little bit of color behind them. I'm ready for the next step color correcting, depth of field, and glow, and rendering out my image. The power of a node-based compositor like this is the ability to connect, well, anything to anything, and to have multiple outputs if we need.